And I'll make a big statement. I believe this year in 2024, I believe more money will be converted from fiat to Bitcoin than the previous 15 years of Bitcoin's existence. Are you ready to uncover the truth behind the 2024 crypto bull run? Watch until the end to find out why the 2024 crypto bull run might be the biggest scam yet. Following Bitcoin's surge to $73,750 on March 14th, the crypto market has been buzzing with excitement and speculation. With Bitcoin now consolidating in the $68,000 to $72,000 range, many are asking, has the bull run officially begun? The upcoming Bitcoin halving on April 19th to 20th adds to the intrigue. This event, which will halve the block reward for miners, has historically impacted Bitcoin's supply and price. According to leading on-chain analyst James Check, the market is transitioning from an enthusiastic bull phase to a potentially euphoric one, with this bull market ranking among the strongest in Bitcoin's history. But it's not just the prices that are surging. Job markets within the crypto industry are also experiencing a boom. Despite previous bearish trends, the number of vacancies in the industry reached an annual high in March. Data from Crypto Jobs List reveals a significant uptick in job postings and applicants hitting an annual record. Unveiling Bitcoin – Where It All Begun in the early 2000s, the world was slowly recovering from the dot-com bust. Tech entrepreneurs were picking up the pieces, looking for the next big innovation. Little did they know, something revolutionary was brewing in the underground world of cypherpunks and cryptography enthusiasts. One project stood out, an ambitious attempt to create a purely digital currency outside the control of governments and financial institutions. Its mysterious creator went by the name Satoshi Nakamoto and they were about to shake the foundations of the global financial system. At the time, online payments required a third party like a bank or payment processor like PayPal to verify transactions. These centralized authorities served as trusted gatekeepers, ensuring buyers and sellers weren't cheating each other, but they also charged hefty fees and could block transactions at will. Nakamoto had a different vision, one of peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash that allowed online payments directly from one party to another with no middlemen. This required solving a fundamental issue that had plagued previous digital currency efforts, the risk of double spending the same digital money more than once. Enter blockchain, an ingenious combination of mathematics, computer science, and cryptography. Nakamoto's white paper described an immutable distributed ledger with each new block of data chained and timestamped to the previous one using sophisticated cryptographic proofs. Rather than a central authority verifying transactions, Nakamoto's system used a massive decentralized network of computers, each constantly updating and verifying the entire blockchain. Any attempt to tamper with transaction data would be immediately rejected by the majority of nodes. In 2009, Nakamoto mined the first genesis block of this new decentralized digital cash system, Bitcoin. From this humble birth emerged a technological and philosophical revolution. Bitcoin's open, permissionless network allowed anyone to join, use, or help secure it without relying on trust. Within the dense mathematics of its code lay a radically democratic ideal, a censorship-resistant financial system belonging to no nation or corporation powered by the people. No longer would citizens be beholden to the whims of central bankers or have their funds frozen on dubious legal grounds. Bitcoin's blockchain kept perfect records in a transparent, unbreakable chain. Of course, Bitcoin's emergence was no overnight success. In its early years, Nakamoto's creation was dismissed as a curiosity for computer nerds and libertarian utopists. This was just the beginning. The Rise and Compromises of Bitcoin – From Anti-Establishment Dream to Mainstream Investment Bitcoin was a brand new type of digital money that didn't need any banks or governments involved. This made it really attractive to certain groups of people who deeply distrusted authority and centralized control over money. Anarchists, techno-anarchists, libertarians, and cypherpunks, these were individuals who thought governments, banks, and financial institutions could not be trusted to manage currency properly. They became the first people to adopt and use Bitcoin. These early Bitcoin believers had a mission, to spread the word about this revolutionary new currency and get more people to start using it. 
To them, Satoshi Nakamoto was like a heroic, messianic figure leading them to a new monetary future. Satoshi would communicate messages and a visionary plan through online forums to their devoted followers. The big idea was that Bitcoin would eventually replace the US dollar and other government-backed currencies. All transactions worldwide would happen using Bitcoin instead, a truly global currency owned by the people rather than controlled by any central authority. The early adopters felt like they were part of the next big revolution in money. As more people started buying into the Bitcoin ideology and acquiring the digital coins, something incredible happened. Bitcoin's value started skyrocketing. The more people wanted Bitcoin, the higher its price went. Every purchase was like a vote saying, I believe in this Bitcoin thing. Those early believers were racking up huge gains just by owning Bitcoin. But Bitcoin's rapidly rising success caught the attention of people it may not have wanted, the wealthy financial elite and investors from the traditional money system that Bitcoin was supposed to overthrow. Groups like the famous Winklevoss twins, who had previously sued Mark Zuckerberg over Facebook, were among the first big money investors to start stockpiling Bitcoin heavily after learning about it on vacation in 2013. To idolists, having the type of wealthy, corporate investors that Bitcoin was created to circumvent start getting involved felt like a betrayal of its founding principles. But there was no stopping the mainstream financial world from wanting a piece of this soaring new asset class, no matter its anti-establishment origins. Critics argued that Bitcoin's revolution was doomed from the very start. After all, they claimed, how could restructuring the entire monetary system on some computer code invented by anti-government activists possibly work out? The skeptics felt relying on such radical anarchist ideals could never securely support a global financial system. But the believers pushed back hard. They had placed their faith in the system built on cutting-edge technology and a philosophy of monetary freedom from the ruling class. No amount of doubters could shake their convictions in Satoshi's vision. However, as Bitcoin's price skyrocketed to levels its creators could have never imagined, major contradictions in its design started being exposed. There was a hard limit coded into cap Bitcoin's total supply at 21 million coins. This made it deflationary. If each Bitcoin was inevitably going to be worth more money over time, why would anyone want to actually spend it and get rid of it? It created an incentive to hoard rather than use the currency, undermining its purpose. Bitcoin also had severe technical limitations, like only being able to process a measly 7 transactions per second, compared to payment giants like Visa and MasterCard, which could handle thousands of times of more transactions, Bitcoin's capabilities seem to fail embarrassingly short for any dream of being a true global currency. The biggest problem though was the mind-boggling amount of energy required to run Bitcoin's network. In order to keep Bitcoin decentralized and not controlled by any single entity, it used an ingenious but highly inefficient system called proof-of-work, where energy-guzzling computers competed against each other to solve complex math problems. Whichever machine solved it first would get rewarded with new Bitcoins. This process was dubbed mining. Before long, an arms race had emerged between mining conglomerates building increasingly powerful computer rigs to have an edge, all while consuming incomprehensible amounts of real-world electricity. Bitcoin mining farms were using enough energy to power entire cities, yet the system's capacity for transactions remained pitifully small. Bitcoin had sacrificed sustainability for its cherished decentralization principle. Despite all these glaring issues, Bitcoin against all odds managed to survive, but not without fundamentally compromising the core principles it had originally stood for. What had started as a revolutionary movement towards monetary freedom and independence from rapacious financial authorities had become completely dependent on those same centralized institutions it had tried to overhaul. Big banks, corporations, and extremely wealthy investors from the old guard were now the ones profiting immensely from Bitcoin price speculation rather than using it for its intended purpose of transparently transferring value. To comply with regulations, Bitcoin trading had centralized onto exchanges overseen by legacy financial firms, the exact opposite of Satoshi's decentralization ideal. By 2014, the anonymous creator Satoshi Nakamoto had seemingly vanished off the internet, never to be seen again, abandoning their invention to a fate that was near unrecognizable from the original redemptive vision of a people's currency. Bitcoin as it existed today was now a far cry from being some monetary revolution. The only ones getting rich were the same finance tycoons and institutions that cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin had initially sought to make obsolete. As this caused the birth of the crypto world. 
While Bitcoin was the spark that ignited the cryptocurrency revolution, it was merely the first amber in what would become a raging wildfire of innovation. Satoshi Nakamoto's invention challenged everything we thought we knew about money and finance, but it also unlocked the promise of an entirely new asset class, cryptocurrencies. In its early days, Bitcoin was seen as little more than a novelty, an experiment by anti-establishment coders looking to subvert the mainstream financial system. But as the pioneering digital currency's popularity grew, so too did interest in replicating and improving upon its underlying blockchain technology. Seeing the vast potential of decentralized finance and record keeping, a new breed of entrepreneurs and developers flooded the nascent space. They didn't just want to replicate Bitcoin's success, they aimed to build upon its foundations, creating new cryptocurrencies with novel use cases and improved functionality. The first wave of altcoins, like Litecoin, Peercoin, and Namecoin, expanded Bitcoin's core capabilities, exploring ways to improve transaction speeds, mining algorithms, and data management. While none could match Bitcoin's breakthrough nature, they demonstrated the versatility of blockchain technology. It was Ethereum, however, that catalyzed crypto's transition from niche experiment to world-changing phenomenon. Launched in 2015, Ethereum was envisioned as a decentralized global computing platform, one that used its cryptocurrencies Ether to power applications and smart contracts on its revolutionary network. Ethereum opened the floodgates, inspiring thousands of new cryptocurrency projects tackling everything from finance to gaming, data storage, and business operations. Seemingly overnight, crypto went from a fringe obsession to one of the hottest sectors in tech and investing. So-called blockchain entrepreneurs raised billions through initial coin offerings or ICOs, a new fundraising mechanism where investors exchange traditional currencies for newly minted crypto tokens. Rampant speculation caused crypto market caps to swell into the hundreds of billions. A new age of decentralization was dawning, but it wasn't without growing pains. Scams, hacks, and overhyped projects created volatility that threatened the entire crypto market's credibility. The early days and first real-world transaction. In 2009, when Bitcoin was first created, it had virtually no value or price. The first real transaction using Bitcoins happened in May 2010 when a programmer named Laszlo Hentius bought two pizzas for 10,000 Bitcoins. At that time, those 10,000 Bitcoins were worth just a few dollars. Volatile rise to over $1,000. Bitcoin started getting more attention in 2011, as its price rose significantly, hitting over $1 before dropping back down to around 30 cents by mid-year. But then it really took off, reaching $31 by the end of 2011. In the next two years, the price steadily climbed higher, going over $1,000 for the first time in late 2013. The Bears Take Over However, 2014 saw Bitcoin enter a bear market as its price fell sharply to around $300 by year-end. This decline was caused by factors like regulatory concerns in some countries and security breaches at major exchanges. For 2015, Bitcoin traded in a range between $200 and $500. New heights and then a crushing correction. There was steady growth in 2016 and 2017 as Bitcoin's price went from under $1,000 to an incredible peak near $20,000 in December 2017 during an amazing bull run fueled by growing mainstream interest. But 2018 brought a massive price correction, with Bitcoin plummeting back under $4,000 by the end of that year. Recovery and Resilience after bottoming out in 2018, Bitcoin spent 2019 recovering ground as its price climbed back to over $7,000. In 2020, despite the COVID-19 pandemic's economic upheaval, Bitcoin showed resilience, trading mostly between $5,000 and $10,000 for the year, but closing around $29,000. Institutional adoption ignites a boom. The year 2021 marked Bitcoin's entry into the realm of mainstream finance and institutional investment. Its price surged past $60,000 in April, driven by huge companies like Tesla adding Bitcoin to their corporate treasuries. While volatility continued, Bitcoin closed 2021 around $46,000. Navigating Regulations and Environmental Debates in 2022, Bitcoin's price seesawed between $30,000 and $50,000 amidst ongoing debates around crypto regulations and environmental impacts of Bitcoin mining. Despite these headwinds, it finished 2022 near $45,000. The following year, 2023, saw Bitcoin trade in the $40,000 to $60,000 range, closing around $55,000. The Bitcoin ETF Catalyst 
2024 proved to be a massive milestone year. After a prolonged battle, the SEC finally approved Bitcoin spot exchange traded funds ETFs in January. This breakthrough approval unleashed pent-up investor demand. Between late February and mid-April, Bitcoin went on an epic run, blowing past $60,000 then $70,000, setting new all-time highs culminating at the current record price of $70,719.90 on April 12th. Bull or Bubble Bitcoin once again breaches all-time highs, meme coins regain popularity, and decentralized finance DeFi projects tout eye-popping yields. This atmosphere has all the hallmarks of a bull market frenzy, but not everyone is convinced that the frenzy is here to stay. For some, like the crypto payments business MoonPay, the bull run began as early as October 20th, 2023. On that fateful day, MoonPay experienced a 24% jump in daily volume above its 2023 average, driven by a surge of retail investors piling into crypto. This spike was triggered by the Securities and Exchange Commission SEC dropping its case against two Ripple executives, sparking a Bitcoin rally above $30,000 and fueling optimism about the imminent approval of the first Bitcoin exchange-traded fund, ETF. The volume increase wasn't a flash in the pan. By November 30th, MoonPay's average daily volumes remained 24% above pre-October 20 levels. This figure continued to climb, reaching 51% by December 31st and a staggering 63% by January 31st. Coinciding with this sustained uptick, Bitcoin more than doubled in value soaring to $64,000. MoonPay, once nicknamed the PayPal of crypto, is no stranger to the industry's boom and bust cycles. In November 2021, at the height of the previous bull market euphoria, the startup was valued at a staggering $3.4 billion after raising a $555 million Series A funding round, a testament to the lengths investors were willing to go to secure a piece of the crypto pie. However, the question remains, is this a genuine bull market or merely a speculative bubble? The answer may lie in the eye of the beholder. While some see the current price surge as the start of a sustained upward trajectory, others remain cautious, wary of the volatility that has historically characterized the crypto market. Predictions on what to expect While 2023 was a lackluster year for crypto with major coins like Bitcoin and Ethereum trading sideways, the recent approval of Bitcoin spot ETFs by the SEC has sparked optimism about an impending bull run in 2024. The approvals from heavyweight players like BlackRock, ARK Invest, Fidelity, and others are expected to bring improved trading volumes and liquidity to crypto markets. This positive development, coupled with the upcoming Bitcoin halving event in quarter 2 2024 that reduces new supply, has led to speculation that a sustained bull market could replace the recent crypto winter. However, some analysts advise caution as the market may have already priced in the good news about ETF approvals. The classic buy the rumor, sell the news adage suggests traders who bought on the rumor may look to sell after the actual news, leading to a potential correction before any real bull run emerges. While Bitcoin ETFs are a big step, they alone are unlikely to signify mass adoption capable of driving crypto prices to new all-time highs in the short term. Similarly, the halving event will support prices by restricting supply but may not be enough to fuel a full-fledged bull run without wider adoption. On a positive note, being a US election year in 2024 could mean less negative regulatory news to dent investor enthusiasm and set the stage for the next bull cycle. The overall analysis suggests 2024 may see some minor volatility as prices fluctuate between hype and disappointment but the lack of major swings indicates a maturing market. The base case scenario predicted is that crypto prices will bottom out in 2024 before starting a more meaningful recovery by fourth quarter. In summary, while cautious optimism surrounds a potential 2024 Bitcoin bull run driven by ETFs and the halving, analysts warn it may take wider mainstream adoption for crypto prices to break out to new historical highs in the short term. A volatile year giving way to a gradual upward trend seems the most likely outlook.